Welcome back again. Hi, my name is Robert Allen, author of these number one New York Times bestsellers, talking to you about how you create some wealth in your life. And now is the decision making time for you. I'm going to show with, share with you some things I have learned in my 50 year career about how to make sure that when you decide to do something, it actually gets done. And over the last few Bobcasts, we've been talking, generally speaking, about your purpose in life and your ideal lifestyle and the things you really want. I've shared with you briefly about this, this why, this fork in the road. <clears throat> and when Frost wrote that, that poem, uh, two, uh, I, you know, two, two roads diverge in a yellow wood and I, I took the one less traveled by. Uh, that is a, it's a poem that I absolutely love because in your life there are always two roads diverging and they diverge a thousand times a day. You're going to make a thousand decisions and there are those, those thousand decisions. What toothpaste do you use? What time do you get up in the morning? What time do you go to bed? What television shows do you watch? What do you eat? What, when you travel, travel to work or not work uh, or your business, what route do you take? Uh, what kind of car do you drive? What kind of clothes did you put on that this morning? There are just a thousand decisions. And as I've said to you, about 1% of those decisions really make a difference. And therefore, when you get to this point in your life, the decision point, it starts off with the first decision, which is discern. Did, did I discern that this is a decision that'll take me towards what I want or away from what I want, toward my ideal lifestyle or to my not ideal lifestyle? Uh, the ones and the zeros, as, as we talk about binary, all, all the computers are based upon zeros and ones. So a one means it got done. A zero means it didn't get done in the way I describe it here for you. So um, the, 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 the discernment is the first D. And we've talk, talked about it briefly in a previous pop, Bobcast. Discerning means knowing your intuition intuitively. Do you know that this is who you that this is a decision that will take you in the right direction. Was that discernment? Was it just the fact that you were, that you were, that you hunched it, that it was like a hunch that you got, that it should be the right thing to do? Or was it an inspiration? Did it come from a higher power? Um, how did you have the thought even come into your head to do it? Maybe it was a billboard you saw and you thought, I'd like to drive a car like that. Or maybe it was somebody else's lifestyle and you, you notice them and you say, I want to be like that. Uh, what was the, the trigger point that caused you to decide that that's what you wanted? And, and dis, did you discern it? Did it feel right to you? Is it intuitively the right thing for you to do? And then, of course, the, the next uh, conversation is about desire. That's the next D word. Do you really want that? Not, not did you just like it? Would you be interested in it? Would you be curious about it? But do you really, really want that? Like, is it important to you to want that? Is that what you want to put on your resume? Is that what you want to blag about? Will you put that into your obituary? Do you really want that so much that ultimately when the story is written and you're the author of the story and you're writing it every single day, ultimately when this book is put together of the book of your life, do you want that to be a chapter in your life so that you can say, yep, I did that. That's, that's me. That's got my name all over it. That's what I stood for. Desire is a it's a next part of the of the of the decision making. <clears throat> then, when you desire it, did you get clear about it? Clear enough that you ask those seven questions that you've heard me ask many many times: What do you want? When do you want it? Where do you want it? How much of it do you want? Who do you want it with? Why do you want it? And how am I going to get it? Those seven questions. They're just basic questions for, that any uh, elementary school kid could ask. But have you asked them of yourself? Elementary, these are elementary to your success. Did you ask yourself that? If not, not enough. Not clear enough. Your brain is a computer. Today, I sat at my computer and I typed in a website that I wanted to look at. I pushed the button and it said, this website does not exist. 
And I said to myself, what? I look at my, the writing I wrote down, the website for me to check it out. <clears throat> and I type it in again, and it, this website does not exist. Uh, uh, I looked and I had misspelled, I had misspelled one letter in a long email address or a, a website address, a domain name. One letter I misspelled. Guess how often I could have typed in that same bad address and ever gotten to where I wanted to go. In other words, these seven questions are precise. And the more precise they can be for you, you're a computer, you're a computer brain. I'm sorry, you're, you have a computer brain. You also have a soul, a spirit that's much broader than that. It's more than a machine. You are more, more than your, your computer mach machine brain. But ultimately, if you don't type in the right answers to those seven questions, you don't get to the website you wanted to get to. And you don't get to the life you wanted to get to. So you got to be precise. Your computer is very picky. It wants to know exactly what those numbers are. Did you numberize your desire? Did you, did you put numbers? When do I want it? What's the date? Where do I want it? Where are you going to be living in? How big is the house going to be? Who's going to live in that house with you? Who's going to help you get it? What's your team like? We talked about that in the previous Bobcast, forming a team. Who is going to help you get to your dream? How much of it do you want? How, how much, what is your financial freedom number? You know, every one of these seven questions is numberized. And therefore, the more clear you are about the numbers, the more your computer brain goes, oh, oh, I get it. When you said financial freedom, I didn't understand what you meant. It was just too broad of a term. What you meant was $10,000 a month flowing in from 16 apartments that you own in the city of New Jersey, uh, you know, of, of, of I was going to say New Jersey, that's not a city, um, New York City, uh, Atlanta, Se Seattle, Toronto, Moscow. Oh, oh, I get it. Now your computer brain can process that. And everybody else's computer brain can also process it. They can see it more clearly, and they can help you accomplish it better if you're clear about it, especially as you're clear with your team members and everybody else you talk to. Because the third D in this process, once you've decided it, that's the third D. I've discerned it. I've desired it. I've decided it. How do you decide it? Okay. You say you want to be a real estate millionaire. Okay, let's, let's get specific here. You've decided it. <clears throat> How do I know you've decided it? Is it written down anywhere? Did you write it down? Do you have pictures of the lifestyle that you would like to live posted on your vision board somewhere? So you could show your brain and everybody else who walked into the house, this is what my, my ideal lifestyle looks like? You cut them out of the, the magazines, uh, whatever you wanted to look at. <clears throat> I've heard John Asraf tell the story, and I absolutely love the story. It was, it was a story he told in The, uh, in the Secret, the video secret from about 10 years ago. John, a uh, neighbor of mine in uh, Southern California, great guy, love him. He tells, I've been, actually been in his house when he told me this story. He brings me into the house, uh, into his office, beautiful, magnificent home. I look up on his vision board, and he says, this has only been up here a few weeks. And I look on his vision board. I can see all the things he wants. I thought that was kind of interesting. It was not all that professional. It was just cut out pictures on this vision board in his office, in his house. And he says, when I put this board up in our home, it was a beautiful home across the valley, a short way from my home. So I could see his home from my home. And therefore, when he invited me to come to his home and invited me to his office, he said, my son came into my office a few days after I had taken this dream board out of my storage unit in San Diego, California, where it had, where it had been 
sitting for uh, several years because I had it sent from when I created this board in, I think it was Indiana or Illinois or, or something like that, where he had lived for many years. And then he packed up his things and sent them into California and eventually pulled it out of his storage unit and posted it on his wall. He was proud of his vision board. And his son walks into the office and said, Daddy, that's our house. And I look and see a picture of John's house on his vision board. He had unconsciously cop cut a copy of the picture out of a magazine or a realtor's listing or something 10 years earlier, I don't know, and forgotten that that was the home he wanted. When he eventually moved to California, he started looking and unconsciously found this home he was living in had forgotten that it was the home he said was on his vision board until his son noticed that that house was his house. I mean, that's how powerful creating the desire of what you want and the deciding of what you want. He at least decided in enough to put it, to cut it out of a magazine and put it, paste it on his vision board so that ultimately the truth would come out that he bought the house he loved. And so how do I know you've decided? You say you want to be a real estate investor? What kind of real estate do you want? Do you have pictures of those, the kinds of properties that you want? Do you, do you have an area of town? Have you chosen your, your, your um, farming zone yet, your, your real estate farm yet? What is a real estate farm? It's a 10, it's a, it's a mile square a, a area of your city where you live right now, where you've decided that you want to buy your properties in that area, in that one or two mile square area. There are a thousand properties in that, in that uh, little area that you delineated for your city. Is it close to the kinds of shopping, the kind of education, the kind of schooling that you want for your family? Is this close to a golf course? Is it close to, what is it close to? Um, and uh, what kind of properties are there around it, surrounding it? Maybe you don't want the high rent district. Maybe you want a, a, a middle class zone where you'll do a lot of your investing. Where are the ideal properties located that you're looking for? Have you delineated a farming zone, a place where you'll drive through regularly looking for for sale signs, especially for sale by owner signs are even the, they're the best ones to get. Do, do you drive by regularly? Have you decided not only where you want to shop, but what kind of properties you're going to be looking for? Have you decided that this is the scoring system you're going to use? We haven't talked too much about that, but... Ultimately, I'll be teaching a scoring system I think you should be using so that when a property in your target territory, your farming zone, comes up, you can evaluate it whether or not it's a property you want to put in your portfolio or not, or you want to say no to it. Yeah, back, back to yeses and nos. So these Ds are what you do once you have discerned it's the right thing to do and you're now taking the fork that's going to take you to where you want to be you discern, you desire, you decide. Did you write it down? Did you envision it? Did you did you did you make it the make the decision more concrete? Or did you just say, yeah, I thought I would do that? Uh, do I know the date you decided it? Is there a date you said on this date I've made the decision to do this? In other words, the more concrete you make every one of the d's in the step process the the more realistic the the greater the probability that what you want actually happens <clears throat> i've read a chart about decision making and i can't remember the numbers but i'm going to throw them off really quickly if you just set a goal you know verbally or uh, you know uh, and mentally that the probability you'll get that goal is like 1 in 20 like 5%. If you, 
if you write down that goal, the probability goes up to like 20%. If you verbally declare it to somebody, the probability goes up like 50%. If you, if you actually have a, an account of buddy, uh, somebody that you report to on a daily basis, the, the probability goes up to like 80%. And if you, and, the, and so anyways, there are steps that you take to create a structure or an infrastructure around your decision so that you make sure that that decision actually gets accomplished, right? So that's what we're talking about today. And I'm doing that with you with regard to your real estate. If you decided uh, how many properties you want to get, what do they look like? What target territory are they located in your in your city? Um, have you formed the team of people around you? And then the next D is, did you declare it? Did you verbally or digitally or physically create a declaration for it to happen? Do you tell people that this is what you're ultimate dream is? I told people I wanted to be a millionaire. Elon Musk tells people he wants to colonize Mars. Mars. What? That's ridiculous. Well, he's now created SpaceX, and they're flying people around the Earth and eventually to the moon, so he's on track to do what he said he was due, and he declared it many years ago, and I don't know if he'll ever pull it off, but let's put it this way. I wouldn't bet against it. <laughs> anyway, have you declared it? Well, those of us who live here in America read the Declaration of Independence. We've said it so many times we don't even understand what it means anymore. What it means is 56 men signed their names to a declaration to be independent from England. I don't know if you've ever read the story, but they did the, the, the signing of the Declaration of Independence in July of 1776 while in the harbor in New York City. They were in Philadelphia. In the harbor, just a few miles away, were 50,000 British troops on ships ready to disembark to make sure that the declaration would never happen. They declared it with under the worst possible circumstances. So you might say to yourself, but I'm having trouble now financially. I just lost my job and the, my creditors are coming after me. And in the middle of all of that horror that's going on in your life, yeah, you're going to make a declaration. And for most people, it'll seem kind of foolish. Just like to those 50,000 British troops and all the generals and all the, the millions of people in, in England waiting for these upstart Americans to be put down, they declared it and they looked like fools to everybody. They signed their death warrants, every name on there was to be captured and executed by those 50,000 troops that were landing on the shores of Staten of of uh, of Manhattan Island. Well, you know the rest is history. I'm going to ask you to declare it. I'm ask you to be courageous enough to declare it. Even though there, the, the evidence around you may not be advantageous, shall we say. Still, you declare. You declare it on social media. You declare it to your friends and family. Maybe you work it out with them at first before you declare. You make sure that everybody's on the same page. But then you declare it. And you sign your name to it. And you post it. And now, your word is on the line. You've declared that you're going to do something, and you've given a date when it must be accomplished. Is there the next D in the process? And I'm, as each D comes about, it increases the probability you'll get what you want. So you want to declare it, 
then you have to, yeah, you have to deadline it. And that means a deadline is when you make it real. You say, this is the date. And on this date, I will either achieve the objective I set for myself or, and, I, and if I do, then the, the reward of achieving it will be the reward, the reward itself. And I might even reward, my, reward myself with even more benefits for having done what I said I would do. I might reward myself with a new suit of clothes. I might reward myself with a trip to Europe, you know, uh, buy a new car, whatever. Yes, there'll be a consequence and a reward. A consequence is a penalty for not achieving it. What? Yeah, what's the cost if you don't? If you don't, you said you would do it. Did you declare the consequence when you declared it? If I don't, this is the consequence. I said I was going to lose 20 pounds. If I don't lose 20 pounds by the, the, the date I set, I will give all of you on this list a $100 bill. And there are 16 people on this list, people I'm declaring it to. That means it's going to be it's going to cost me $1,600 if I don't stand on the scale on that date and you see my weight at that. In other words, there's a consequence. Now, I can go into greater detail on this process that I call the, the, the success cycle. What I'm trying to ask you to do in your real estate decisions is deciding exactly what it looks like and then declaring it to people with a, with a uh, reward and a consequence. And the prob- by just doing those four basic fundamental steps, you increase the probability exponentially. If you don't, then it's just a wish. It's not really a decision. It's just a hope, a wish. It's wishful thinking, and therefore wishful thinking never did did a thing in your life. The only thing comes from is what we call declarative thinking, where you declared it, you decided it, you you desired it, you discerned it, you said, this is what I'm going to do. Those are the Ds that happen in this process. So you said you wanted to, you know, uh, buy some real estate this year? You, you really want to make that happen? There are some steps to do it. There are more steps to this process that I'm not going to go into today. There are more, uh, there are more columns, uh, pillars, to hold up this process of making it happen. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, uh, from time to time, I'll bring this chart out and I'll go, let's discuss some more Ds along this process so that you get to the ideal lifestyle that you've always wanted for yourself. But most people don't even do these four things that I've just described to you. They won't do it. Why? Because why? Why don't they do it? You know, I ultimately think it, it boils down to this this, this, this declaration part and the deadlining part. I'll, I'll be teaching you a, a whole podcast on what I call results generating activities. That's RGA. The things you got to do in order to get what you want. And they are things that actually produce a result every day. Um, I won't spend much time talking about that today, except to say that most people will do little things, assuming that that, that takes them to what they really want. And therefore, they, they won't do the things that really get results. For example, let's take one results generating activity you got to do ultimately if you want to succeed at, as a real estate investor. You got to write offers. And most people won't do that. They'll tell you they want to be a real estate millionaire, they'll read all the books on it, they'll go all the seminars, they'll even hire a coach. They'll spend $20,000 and they won't do the, the ultimate thing. They won't write an offer. Why? Because they really don't believe that they can pull it together. They probably don't believe in themselves. That's mindset stuff. 
And therefore, they just, you know, they say they can't pull the trigger. They just can't actually launch. You know, they, they and, and until you write an offer, nothing happens. And the result is yes or no. And, and at that point right there, that decision point, is I need to get a yes or a no. I don't care whether it's yes or no. I need to write an offer and I have to be rejected or accepted. And if I don't get to that point in the, in the decision tree um, and they, they, uh, they don't say yes or no, um, then I don't know whether or not I have an offer, a, a, a deal that I can create. <clears throat> so this declaration part and this setting a deadline part, most people, it's like writing a real estate offer. They won't do it. So it goes back to the very beginning part of the, the process. Do you really want it? If you really want it, then you have to write offers. If you don't really want it, if you want to pretend like you want it, if you want to look like you want it, if you want to go through the motions of pretending and looking like you want it, then don't write an offer. But if you really want it, you need to write an offer. And you have to, you have to be accepted or rejected. If they accept it, ah, oh, now, now we have a consequence. The consequence is if you don't produce the offer like you said you would, you've got an earnest money that's at risk. And if you don't produce, then you could lose whatever earnest money you put down to hold the deal so they could pull it off the market while you proceeded to do what you said you would do. So you don't write an offer, no rejection, no risk. Hey, now there are ways to write riskless offers, and we'll talk about that in another podcast. But uh, in other words, you can make an offer with zero risk that you lose any money at all. However, most people don't know that, so they end up, they're afraid to write offers because they're afraid that they'd lose their earnest money and therefore they, they, they are stymied in their progress towards success. So these first four Ds that I just shared with you, do you have the courage to actually do them? Does it feel right to you? Do you discern it? Is this who you really want to be? Who do you really want to be? Do you really want to answer those seven questions that I just laid out for you? Have you answered them? What, what do you want? When do you want it? Where do you want it? How much of it do you want? Who do you want it with? Why do you want it? And how are you going to get it? Which vehicle are you going to choose? If you don't want it, you probably won't down, write down the answers to those questions. And now you've wanted it, you've desired it, you've clarified it. Did you... Decide it. Decide is a funny, funny word. Decide. Side comes from a word you've heard a lot. It's the root word of homicide. It means to kill. When you decide something, you kill all the other options. And you decided this is the option you have chosen. Some people are terrible at making decisions. Why? Because they're afraid that if they decide to do this, it will take out all the other options. They have FOMO for everything else, their fear of missing out on all this other stuff, and therefore they don't decide. And when you don't decide, what do you get? Nothing. You get 100% failure when you don't decide. If you did decide, at least there's a possibility that you would ultimately get what you decided to do or get. And that means you have to have FOMO. FOMO is a word that losers use. And I've used it myself too. So we all use it. I'm, I'm afraid I'll, I'll miss out. But the real question is, maybe you should, should ought to miss out. Back to the decision point, FOMO right here. If I, if, I, if I decide to do this, then that means I can't decide to do that. Therefore, maybe I won't get married because maybe I'd marry the wrong person. 
And if I do that, then what am I going to do? And therefore, I, a lot of a lot of people in, in the certain stages of their life they won't commit because they can't they can't decide because they decide. When you decide, you basically kill other, all the other options and you have to choose that this is the one spouse and I know what that's like. So having been married 44 years, I know I made a decision in 1977 and that's a choice I made and it's irrevocable. And I know that's hard to say in, in our modern, modern days, but that's the decision I made. So when you make a decision, you decide, you homicide it, you cut it off, you cut or kill, what side means. And most people, they can't do it. And if they can't do it, then you don't get your dream. You don't get your ideal lifestyle. You get to get your ordinary lifestyle. And you have what you got right now. And every decision you've ever made has got you right exactly where you are watching this right now. Every decision has put you right there. Now, if you want something better, look around you. Look around where you're living. Where, where are you? Are you watching this on your cell phone? Uh, at a party? Uh, are you at... Uh, are you at home in your office? Are you at work? And you're in your car. You can't be watching this if you're in your car. But you listen. You can listen to it. Uh, where are you right now? Look around you. You created it. The seeds you planted years ago, years ago have now come to fruition. You're living the crop you planted. You want a better crop? You've decided that's the crop you want. That's the crop you want. You have to decide. You say, I have FOMO for, if, if your weight loss is your thing, then I have to have FOMO for every person who's eating an ice cream uh, cone from now on. When I see someone with an ice cream cone, I don't have FOMO anymore. I've decided that decision is done. Never going to bother me again. Done. Same thing with exercise, same thing with, with making money, same thing with having relationships. It's all about making decisions. So, and finally, did you declare it? Those four steps, I'm not going to go any further because I want you to at least do those four things. And then in another podcast, we'll go deeper into the other Ds that'll make that it increase the probability that the things you said you wanted to get done in your ideal lifestyle will actually get done at a higher probability, 70, 80, 90, 95%. If you do these eight things, you get 95%. If you only do one of these things, you get 10% probability. If you do none of them, you get 5% or 0%, right? So this is the Bobcast. Now, mindset is something that you want. You want your mindset to be right. So I'm going to give you the book that should be in your library. It's the, it's the Think and Grow Rich book by Napoleon Hill. If it's already in your library, maybe you've been watching these Bobcasts and you've already received a free copy of the, the Think and Grow Rich book and the audio uh, book that goes along with it. I recorded Think and Grow Rich for you as a gift to you. Or the book, The Challenge, that also is part of this process. Uh, the Challenge book is me going to an unemployment line and selecting people to, to teach the concepts I'm teaching you and, and generating ge uh, incredible success with it. Uh, you should be downloading. Click on the link, download those, those, uh, those books for you, get it done. They're going to increase your probability that you'll, you'll get what you really want in your dream. Um, in addition to that, some of you have said, you know, this, this Bob guy, I like, I resonate with him and the way he shares his vision with me. I realize, I'm saying this as if you were me, or as if I was you, seems as if Bob understands me. He knows what is holding me back. He knows that I have these dreams and I've always had these dreams and I want to make these things happen. Um, I want him to be my mentor. I want to be part of his mastermind. I want to join with other people like me, you're saying, 
people who, who have clear dreams and I want to surround myself with people who've made these kinds of decisions so that their success can rub off of me and their network get to rub off, rub off of me because the people they bumped into to put onto their success network, their genius networks, I get to ac accumulate and acquire their networks by just being part of a mastermind. So if you want a consultation about that, obviously... There's another link you're going to click on. My team will, will, will highlight it in such a way that you'll be able to, to click on that. Let me, let, me talk, let me have you talk to one of my team members. And, uh, and this is a free consultation. We'll find out exactly where you are, where you want to go, and give you specific instructions on how to get there. And if that's a consultation you want, I would think if you were serious about really getting to your dream, you would want us to help you in any way we could. And this is one way I'm helping you, but having the consultation is the next step. It's free. There's no obligation whatsoever. And I guarantee that the person who consults with you has been trained to pull from you, answering you certain questions that will pull from you exactly what you may not have known, maybe even having a blind spot to, We'll be able to share with you exactly what you need to take the next step. Because, as you know, my purpose in life is your success story. Why? Because that's just what I do. That's what I love to do. That's what I'll do till the last breath of, my, of this life. And I wish you well, my friends. Uh, I wish you uh, great success, great dreams. Make, make those dreams happen. Download the book. Think and Grow Rich on the challenge. Get that book. It's my free free gift to you. Just some minor shipping and handling costs. And then finally, get a consultation. Let us talk to you. In the meantime, these podcasts will continue to come as long as it's valuable to you. And because it's what I like to do. I'll see, see you um, as my friend uh, Zig Ziglar used to say. He'd say, I see you at the top. Well. I'll see you at the top too. Have a wonderful day. Good luck. God bless. Click on these links and we'll see you on the next Bobcast. Bye-bye.